cloaked in the shadows. Okay, Amanda. And we're back with part two. Yeah, we've got one ghost here again. The solstice is now. A solstice is coming with a puppet with her cloaks in the shadows. This spot. When we got stage where we were there in the first part of the interview, and I knew there was a topic someone to talk to Kirsty about. So I thought, what would it be for? Quick book and come back then. Now, what, the first thing I want to bring to talk to Kirsty today is, where, is obviously where she is at the moment. And I know obviously you and your friend Miranda Young have got something going on called History Highways and Horns LLC. Because mm-hmm. obviously we launched on the historic Scott County Dale of Huntsville. Mm-hmm. How am I going on about that? Okay, so um, as you said before, it is a partnership with my best friend, uh, Miranda Young from Ghost Biker Explorations. So she and I met probably about, well, six years ago now. And uh, I I was following what she was doing with Ghost Biker and she was following what we were doing with Soul Sisters Paranormal. So we just started corresponding over email and became fast friends. And so we did several uh, collaborations together, collaboration investigations, and uh, we really enjoyed each other's styles. Uh, We're both very much into the history. We're both driven by that. And then following up with with a lot of research on the locations. So, in uh, 2021 she um actually ended up losing her job due to covid and she's from an area in tennessee called scott county and she knew that there was a jail that was sitting vacant since 2008. Um, it was an operation from 1904 to 2008 and then it really set vacant and there was nothing that was that the county or the town of huntsville was really doing with it so we got together and we came up with a business plan and she said would you like to go in with me on this on this business partnership and see if we can open a museum and what we call a paranormal research center. And uh, so I said, opening a museum in the middle of a pandemic, what could go wrong with that? Let's do this. And uh, so I I moved to Scott County, Tennessee, and we opened the museum. Um, I'm actually sitting in the historic Scott County Jail right now. And it's actually been a great experience. So we opened in uh, September of 2021. We do have daytime tours here where people can come through and learn about the jail, learn about crime in Scott County, learn about crime in Tennessee, as well as a law enforcement appreciation museum that we have as well. And um, and so and, and that's our daytime tours. But then we also have nighttime activities. So we have flashlight tours. We have uh, paranormal research where we allow teams to come in and actually spend the night here inside the jail and I've got to tell you it is one of the most active locations I've ever been associated with or involved with Um, it is routine to hear footsteps through here uh, disembodied voices you'll hear whistling almost daily Uh, somebody will start whistling upstairs you'll hear footsteps on the on the back stairwell doors clanging and and shutting even in the day you know we'll be sitting here during the day and and you'll hear something upstairs Uh, we've had over a hundred paranormal investigation teams here so far and um i you know i can honestly say i i think almost every single one has captured at least one thing that they felt was compelling um there are others where the night is electric like i'm talking pictures flying off the walls door slamming in faces you know uh, disembodied voices disem phantom smells and all of that uh so it really runs the gamut here but we've we've absolutely had a great time running the historic scott county jail yeah, so you can ask about that one. Yeah, okay. Tell us, tell us like, yeah, what's been your own personal experience about with this? So have you, have you had this? You've read your little bits and haven't you? So, but tell us, what's been the biggest experience you've had from this yourself, then? Living, living in this stuff. You know, it, 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 it literally, Andy, runs the gamut here. Um, there was one time when I was up on the third floor, and so I was opening uh, one morning, and I, I just, I had a cup of coffee, and, because uh, I always have to have that with me, and uh, so I was I walking up. Feel the same <laughs> yeah. I was walking up on the third floor, and I was just opening the cells and stuff, getting ready for the day, and, you know, we talk to our spirits here, so I just turned the corner, and the, our third level is our maximum security, so picture normal jail cells, right? Um, so I walked upstairs and I, I had my coffee with me and I said good morning everybody um, you know anybody would anybody like a cup of coffee and a man behind me said I want some Dur- I mean dur- I thought I mean I had actually thought somebody had come up behind me and I turned quickly and nobody was there I ran downstairs the door was still locked because uh, we'd locked it from the inside the door was still locked there was nobody here um, so that was pretty compelling um, 
we have uh, throughout the jail, we have different newspaper articles up um, related to crime in Scott County. So newspaper articles from the 1920s all the way up to 2008 when the jail closed. And um, so we have one newspaper article up on the second floor, which tends to be a trigger article that when teams read it, typically something will happen. So it, it, we seem to think that there's a spirit here associated with that article. But anyway, it involves the death of a, of a young woman um, who was uh, murdered here in Scott County. And Miranda and I were up there one night and we were just reading the article, uh, seeing if anything will respond. And I said, um, did anybody here know Rhonda Bird? And a man yelled, I knew her. And uh, I mean, Miranda and I are the only two people in the building, but yet we have this man saying, I knew her. So that was a personal experience. Um, we've had objects go missing, uh, different things go missing, scissors, anything sharp seems to want to disappear. We've had a pair of scissors disappear, um, it, just a whole bunch of stuff here. And so the, yeah, we have personal experiences on a daily basis. Have you had a cup of coffee go missing in here? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we we'll leave some coffee here sometime. We'll leave uh, we leave whiskey for them. Um, we leave cigarettes during the night and just say, hey, listen, thank you guys for for what you're doing. Here's some cigarettes. We'll leave them for the night. Um, so yeah, we we leave a bunch of stuff for them just to say thank you for, for uh, kind of talking to our teams and to us. I've heard talk of bodies that you treat them like with kindness and respect. Mm -hmm. That's what you're gonna get back. Have you? What do you think of that moment? Yeah. There was someone when I was growing up who used to say, like, when I was just worried about ghosts and things, he used to say, it's living you've got to be afraid of, not the dead. Yes, you were absolutely right. I'm more afraid of the living than the dead. You were absolutely right. Uh, and, and for us, you know, when we, it, this is going to sound really weird to say, but when you open a location, I mean, the first day that we had the keys, we were like, please let there be some sort of spirit activity in this building. And I, I, really weird to say that. Um, but really from the first night we were here um, and the first day we were here, we were experiencing things. And I think as the spirits have, have started to know us um, and realize that we're here to preserve the building, to preserve the history, we're telling their stories. Um, like I said, we've got so many newspaper articles up and, and some of those are associated with the building. And the fact that we're telling their stories and we're keeping them alive through those stories, uh, I think that for lack of a better term, they're watching out for us like we're watching out for them. So when we have a team come in, we'll go upstairs and say, listen, guys, we've got this team coming in. We need you to be on point tonight. Um, if they ask you questions, just answer and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And, and it's funny because a lot of the nights they'll respond and and we come in the next morning and we say thank you thank you for giving us the, for showing the team who you are um thank you for the footsteps and all of that and and i think for us we have a very good relationship with our spirits here at the jail yeah that sounds like it straight away so well well, well, well yeah you got my respect for that so definitely so now you want to do something now that we've talked about and i've done at least a podcast this morning i think my own we probably yeah, this is your podcast, yeah with, uh, at least yeah, we 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 recently went over to an area called York in England. I don't know if you know it first. It's about halfway down England or mid, middle of England, really. Isn't it? And it's regarded as England's most haunted city, really, because it was occupied by the Roman religion of do you know, what about eighteen hundred years ago. And Amanda, what don't do tell Kirsty about what the hotel was called. What about the hotel room? The hotel. Yeah. Um, we woke up, we'd been asleep for a couple of hours and it was about midnight and we woke up because the TV switched itself on and normally you'd think, oh, somebody would hold on to the remote, but the remote was at the other side of the room and there were neighbours. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was funny because it woke up quick, it was it made one actually. Yeah, and then I just woke up a bit confused, like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what channel did it turn on to? Anything? <laughs> It wasn't, I can't remember what program it was, but it, it was looked, some American it comedy. It was a comedy it, was. Yeah. it looked like bad acting anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. That, yeah, that, it, now, it, you said that the, the hotel had a haunted reputation at all? Um, not the hotel itself, just the town that it's in. It's mm. rumored to have 500 ghosts in the town. Like different ghosts that have been identified at one point or another. Yeah, it's like um, one of the most dangerous ones. Like when Dad would die, fortune you heard of it. Okay. 
And he goes straight in the 1600s trying to blow up the house of the Parliament with two of gunpowder. So that's what we got like bonfire nights in the And, and there, there was lots of old stores. There's, there's, there's a pub up there called Golden Fleece. Golden Fleece. Which itself is not a Fifteen ghosts on it itself is like it. Like it. You're here. It's worth you if you ever get to England, you, you and your friends in your family, go and check out your, you'll find some story on there, definitely. So. Elizabeth, I love England. I've been over there several times, not as an investigator, but uh, just as a tourist. And, and the, that's the thing I love uh, about where you are and, and the fact that you've got so much history. Don't get me wrong. I love American history, but we don't have the longevity, obviously, obviously that y'all do, um, you know, to walk into Westminster Abbey and, and, and know that these these people have been there since the 1600s um, or to go to some place like Leeds or to um, Oxford or something like that. I mean, just, just to walk back and be immersed in that. And so it doesn't surprise me that you've got, even if a hotel doesn't have a haunted reputation, that that there is the possibility that something is there just because you have such longevity. I mean, the land itself has been there for so long. You believe the lights, the lights I just saw that. I, I, I was just gonna just gonna kind of fly by that one. Um, just I don't know what we're talking about. I was gonna about. let y'all have that. <laughs> it's like the only other we're talking about. Like you, you also because honestly, I don't. I don't I'm just <laughs> well, it, it, what we're doing. Got an extra guest on the podcast. Yeah, there you go. I was, was going to let it slide, see what happened, but you guys went with it. I like it. So maybe no, there's something around you that likes to turn things on. Oh, no, yeah. We know. We know. We know. We know. Once in lockdown. Yeah. Lockdown, yeah. that was it. Yeah. The block we're in is about 40 odd years old, and the bit we're in, the flat we're in, has been okay that I'm aware of. But this shows you like this. We've got a young neighbour in next door to us at the moment. She's showing that track 21. And I'm not going to say if we think of our own camera. We do know if we really want to annoy her, we can tell her that it's like the older lady that lived in there before her, which I'm dead at the toilet, she had a heart sack on the toilet. So if you want to really freak somebody out, that's what you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice. I'm just people. Now, I'm saying, the one last bit I want to touch on you is that we talked about it as brief on camera before, but I'm, I'm interested in love. We talked, we're obviously we're talking camera about our friend Dave, Catherine. And um, Catherine used to have a black cat close to the and she had a lot, Catherine had a lot of trouble with her ex-husband and she had a lot of mental health damage and that cat was really close to her. I never met the cat, but they died not on the day they were the heart again in her life and, and Dave said it to me like when he chatted to him, he's seen what he thinks was a ghost of that cat in their house. So have you come across any sort of animal ghost shit yourself? I have. Um, I'll tell you two experiences. One was a personal experience. Um, well, for, for, let's backtrack for just a second. You know, for me, we're all made up of energy, right? And that includes mm -hmm. animals. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So when we die, that energy has to go somewhere. Um, you know, I, I am a Christian. I do believe that there is an afterlife. We'll call it heaven. Um, but I don't believe that everybody ascends to that immediately, right? That the energy does stay here, that in some instances, we're allowed to see that energy. I think the same thing happens with animals. Um, so the personal experience that I have, um, this was probably, I don't know, about eight years ago, seven or eight years ago. I had a dog. Um, and I love this dog. Her name was Amelia and uh, I'd gotten her for a birthday gift. And so she was about a year and a half old and something, she was a golden retriever and, and something wasn't quite, uh, there was one afternoon, something was not quite right with her. Um, she started staggering a little bit and, and she just seemed really kind of off. Um, so I took her to the vet and the vet was like, eh, there's nothing wrong with her. We, you know, we tried all of this. We ran some tests. We don't see anything wrong with her. Just take her home and, and just, it, it, she'll be okay. Um, so we got, I got home, um, that night and I told my mom, like, I really think something's wrong with Amelia. Um, and mom said, okay, well, if she, if she's not better in the morning, we'll just get up and we'll take her to, um, Shan's hospital, which is a, it's a big vet hospital in Florida. Um, and so uh, at this point I was living back with my mom and dad for a while. And, um, so the next morning, uh, it was about five in the morning and mom came up and, and she woke me up and she said, uh, Amelia's dead. And I lost it. I absolutely lost it. I mean, I was just hysterical. So I ran outside to the front from the front yard and I'm just sitting on the front yard, just bawling. And I look up 
and I see her run across the field and because we have a large backyard and I'm like there she is and mom's like what are you talking about and I I, I know I know I saw that dog uh, I mean as clear as I'm seeing you I know I saw her running across that backyard um, we did have two other dogs at the time but they were behind me um, say they were all golden retrievers and I know I saw her uh, and, and mom just kind of just shook it off as me being hysterical. But I, I, I'm telling you, as sure as anything, she just ran right across that backyard. Um, so that's my first my first experience. Um, the second one was when we were talking about the hospital on College Hill in, our, in part number one, um, I had mentioned that that hospital was used as a veterinary host, uh, as a, uh, a veterinary clinic as well, because one of the doctors was also a, a vet. He was a doctor and a vet. Um, so he would allow animals to come into the hospital and he would see them in the surgical rooms or the, the um, you know, the, the patient rooms. Um, so the reports are that you will hear a phantom horse um, or other phantom um, animal sounds inside the hospital. And so I'm actually going through all of the audio of that investigation now, but we have one uh, voice recorder that was set up in one of the hallways. And uh, during the night, we hear a cat come up to the voice recorder and meows. Um, there's no cat in the hospital, right? Um, but yet we're hearing this phantom meow, which is kind of cool. Yeah, what do you reckon on that one? Can you, can you function visually with this like animal ghosts? I'm not going to that repeat the whole story that you've told us because it's on another podcast anyway. That's a, a mutual friend. She told us a story about seeing a dog that she grew up with that had died. Yeah, so yeah, I, I, I completely, that's why I was curious on your opinion now. Yeah, I completely agree with it. Now, mm -hmm. as we're starting to wrap up after part two now, is there anything obviously, I know you've got an investigation on some, from the first part already, it's on stuff that's going to be pulled up on your website fairly soon. Do you and your sister have anything else planned at all from the further investigation on the first of the year? Yeah, so um, we've got several little investigations that we're doing throughout the remainder of the year. Our next big one is uh, Hillview Manor in Pennsylvania. We'll be going up there. Um, as I said in the first part, my sister and I are twins. And uh, so there's a town called Twinsburg, Ohio. And every oh, year- Oh, you've got to go. You've got to go with <laughs> Yeah, every, every, year, every year they have a twins festival. It's the largest gathering of twins and multiples in the world. They've been having it for almost 50 years now. Um, so Jamie and I have gone for the last three years. And so this will be our fourth year and so um we're going to go up to it's in august so we're going to go up to twinsburg um and do an investigation at hillview manor while we're up there in twinsburg so that'll be in august um so we're really much looking forward to to getting that investigation um, underway keep us informed there you go with definitely as well we'll certainly love to have you on there again we'll leave out a few more investigations definitely now obviously yeah. obviously yeah, this is part two again if people people find out more about you where do they go uh, so our website is www.soulsistersparanormal.com. We're also very active on Facebook under Soul Sisters Paranormal. And then we have a YouTube channel under Soul Sisters Paranormal. If you want to learn more about the historic Scott County Jail, you can go to www.historicscottcojail.com um, or visit us on Facebook under Historic Scott County Jail. Perfect. Thank you again, Kirsty. It's been an absolute pleasure. And Thank you both. To see you would love to have you on again in the future. Definitely so. Thank you, Amanda, as always. Thanks, Kirsty. Hang around, obviously, because I need to put in these bits of my head anyway. So, but it's been a pleasure. So, Amanda. I'm cloaking into the shadows. Yeah, we'll <laughs> like that. Was, it'll be our own ghosts. See you later, guys. Thanks. Cloak in the shadows.